Can we fix the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? What's wrong with it, Wave? I hear you say. Nothing at all. Thank you for watching. See ya. Still here? <laughs> Great to have you. Now sit down and shut the f The fact that you clicked on this video means that you either believe what I'm saying, that something is indeed wrong, or you'd at least want to hear me out and uh, what I have to say and then possibly rage in the comment. I will preface all of my upcoming points by saying that I love this game and I have for decades now. So this criticism comes from a place of love and not hate. Today I put forth a question many of us have discussed while hanging out with friends at tournaments or each other's houses or Walmarts or the burlesque show, whatever floats your boat. How do you fix Yu-Gi-Oh? First, let's get into what's wrong with this game, which brings us to point numero uno. <laughs> this feels like an impossible problem to tackle. Konami wants money, Mr. Crab style. They do this by artificially making cards scarce so that their value is more than it should be. To hammer this point home, hear me out, the price of a gram of gold is $76 as of recording of this video. An average Yu-Gi-Oh card weighs 1.65 grams, meaning that any card over $125 is worth more than its weight in gold. What the? Is this as ridiculous to you guys as it is to me? Gold, like one of the most valuable metals in the world, using applications from like dentistry to space, is worth the same amount of money as cards like SP Little Knight, Barone, Ash, Imperm, etc. in their prime prices. Konami, you think this is okay? One thing that exacerbates this even more is the underlying tryhardness in Yu-Gi-Oh, where players must get their hands on the expensive cards. They got to do it day one or else they think they have no chance. You are entitled to try your hardest to win and do well in this hobby. The problem is when Konami gives you only two options to do well. One road is playing budget and having almost no chance. The other, you have to buy overpriced cards to do well almost like the political system in America. This would be fine if prizing made that worth it. Brings me to my second point. <laughs> this is why in the end, both players lose whichever way you pick. The budget guy, in it for fun, gets cooked by essentially pay-to-win decks. And the pay-to-win guy loses because he spent 500 to to $1,000 on a deck that most certainly won't make any of that money back when he sells it or when he trades it or whatnot. Which begs the question, why do this? Winners of a 16-man event at a regional or a YCS get better prizing than top eight in a regional other than the winner. Meaning that in like a 400-person regional, the person that places two to eight gets worse prizing than the winner of a 16-man tournament in the side event. That's insane. So the dilemma is that you're buying expensive $1,000 decks to do well at a game that does not reward you for doing that, aside from possibly the good feels you get from winning. And as we all know, you don't have to eat. You can just live off good feels. Ha <laughs> ha, I don't care, dog. I got that pack money. And I like Max Verity, my pet Medoche deck on top of spending a G for the meta deck. Ha <laughs> ha, I hear you say. Fair enough. <laughs> No one can just pick this game up and play it. Decks are too complicated. Believe me, I've tried with so many friends. You have to have someone who's super devoted to it to get good. Otherwise, they lose interest and peace out. It's literally too hard for newbies to play something like Satellar Knights, which most people would argue that this is a very simplistic deck that's a great noob deck. It's hard. People don't understand the concepts of Yu-Gi-Oh. You have to teach them just basically placing cards on the field before they can even get to that place where they can start thinking, chaining combos and stuff new players struggle. A side problem that relates to this one is that the player base is getting older. Players are in an average age of 25 to 35, meaning that they're the prime age of starting families and having kids like yours truly. That cuts into your game time, meaning all of us can't really support the game the way greedy Konami wants us to, which will cause problems since people will buy less product and it could be a runaway effect causing a mass exodus of players. These two factors are recipes for disaster and a scary proposition for the future of this game. Next problem that needs addressed. Even if you can pick this game up, let's say you can, you're a savant like Pac was who just picked it up and then like a few years later he's winning YCSs. And you got mad stacks to throw down on the game itself. It still has fundamental problems. As I've addressed in numerous videos previously, the game itself has become sort of ridiculous. Functional FTKs are so prevalent that if you don't run absurd amount of hand traps, you could just lose before the start of your turn if you're going second. Of course, this isn't always the case. 
but it happens enough where it doesn't feel good. And if it happens a few matches back to back or in a few matches in the in uh, two you know two out of three, four, three out of five, three out of six in a big tournament, you're looking at a cool X3 and no way of topping unless your opponent bricks also, meaning you don't even have a chance for all those sweet prizes we were talking about earlier. Every game has its flaws, and unsurprisingly, Yu-Gi-Oh has them as well. Plenty of games out there would love the problems of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yu-Gi-Oh is still doing well. All we want to see is it continue to do well. Some card games are not starters. They never get off the ground. I propose Yu-Gi-Oh could have another long, healthy 25 years to make it to the half-century collection so we can finally get the seven printings of SP in the future. If they just implement a few changes to their game, we will see this day. Before I get into solutions, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree that these are the problems of the game? Are there other problems that I've missed? Or how would you go about fixing these problems or other problems? Let's compare notes. Konami needs to make money to keep the game going. No one disputes this. I argue that they don't have to be this greedy and act so anti-consumerist. They make bad sets. They try to save it by putting a $70 to $120 necessary staple secret rare in the set so that it sells artificial scarcity, artificial pumping up of product. The problem is that it's hard to make these consistently, otherwise the game just has a crazy runaway power creep effect. So the sets that don't have these don't sell at all, causing the OTS stores to lose a bunch of money on these sets. After a few of these sets back to back, it's hard for the OTS store to see the force through the trees and continue buying product. And as the player base collectively agreed a few years ago, seal just isn't it. Stores are starting to agree with us and have begun to drop Yu-Gi-Oh! entirely. They're starting to not even have events. And if they carry some product, it's like in the corner. It's like sleeves and maybe like a pack of Rise of Destiny. Without them buying Sealed, we're screwed. Since then, that trickle-down effect of pricing just stops and the singles market could explode in price and eventually disappear because people stop buying cards because it's not worth it. It's already not worth it. It would be even less worth it once this happens. And events disappearing from local scenes has been just catastrophic all over, except in gigantic cities. Now, how do you go about fixing this? Well, sound the bells, but I propose we have a similar setup to OCG. Oh my god, a unique idea from Dueling Wave. that No one has thought of this before. Hear me out. Not a direct one-to-one. -one. I don't think that would work. A lot of people just propose, like, copy OCG, everything exactly. No, I don't, I don't think it will. But as we saw, cards like SP are super rare in the OCG, making it super affordable. Every deck could use an SP. Maybe even two. According to OCG, maybe even three, right? That's why they limit it to a semi-limited. Here in the TCG, it's a hard to acquire $120 secret rare. The OCG system allows players to get their hands on it more easily. It also incentivizes buying a pack or two while at the store because you have a chance of getting a copy of this card. For people that don't think this is the case, we can use Bistials as an example. Magnumut, Druusworm, Saranir. These cards were, Druusworm and Magnumut especially, these cards were $15 super rares each right and you needed three of each you're looking at $45 for one $45 for the other set that's $90 on just super rare cards because they counter tier limits they could have very well been secret rares but they put them on purpose to be super rares for a reason this was a great move helped sell darkwing blast you pulled a magna and a druis which was fairly not that complicated to do. It would happen. You'd already have half your value without getting to your ultras or your secrets. This incentivized buying single packs. You go to the store, you could pick up a pack of Darkwing Blast. Who knows? Your super rare could be a Magnum with boom, $15 card. This signifies game health when people just buy loose packs. I think I heard Team APS talk about it. I think he's on something there. At my locals, no one uses their store, cre store credit to buy packs. We just tore it for some hypothetical future pack that's supposedly going to be worth it in the future, like a future agave or whatever. That's indicative of buying single packs overall in the game, since if you're not willing to spend winnings on them, you're sure as hell not spending your hard-earned money. And this can work if they raise the overall quality of the cards. Instead of having a set come out every month, maybe we have a set come out every month and a half or two months, and then have some of the great cards be pooled more democratically, throughout these sets and just remove some of the pack filler and garbage that way every single set every single box will be worth it to buy we don't need 10 deck builder sets every every year we don't need memento tenochtitlan deck you know unless you're maybe an aztec if you combine some of these sets we could have sets that give you support give you new archetypes let's say you drop a rescue ace in a purely and then you get two like two more 
d uh, archetypes in that set that are supported like legacy sets. Like imagine if Unchained level support came out for, I don't know, Vendreds or something in the past. Testina, whatever, right? Some TCG archetype. You take these two, plus you give two more supports or one deck support, right? You give it enough to be competitive like an Unchained deck. Boom, you have something. People will buy that like hotcakes. And you don't have to make new archetypes that you have to make brand new cards for and whatnot. You could just support some of the older stuff. Lastly, how to fix this particular issue is a heavy-handed ban list. You got to address the problem cards like I just spoke about earlier. We ban Barone, we ban Savage, but we still need to hit Apo, right? This, when we do a murder list, it would allow players to play their favorite pet decks as a tier 2, a rogue option, and then just make the new archetypes a bit stronger than the previous stuff for it to become the best stuff. Kind of like if we removed fire from the equation since it's power creeped everything, voiceless would be probably the best deck in the game. It wouldn't be by a mile like fire is. That would be the ideal format. The new stuff is the best, right? We introduce a little power creep. The people that want that, go buy it. You make money on it. The people that want to play their old stuff, you can support that old stuff, but it's not the optimal way to play. Ideally, if you want to win, you still would have to buy Voiceless, but you could play your old stuff. There's been formats like this. We just got out of it like six months ago with Unchained and Rescue Ace and that. You could run the more expensive deck. You could run a cheaper deck like Unchained. You had options, right? And you'd still have to buy new cards, right? Like Unchained, you had to buy new... You, you couldn't just run the old Unchained stuff. You have to buy new Unchained stuff, even if it wasn't that expensive, right? This is how you manage greed. This is how you manage a game. This is how you profit, but make your player base happy, which will in turn buy more product, which will cause a snowball effect where you will move more product, making more money, economies of scale and whatnot, better than possibly destroying your game by making only every third or fourth set good. Also, make TCG exclusives better, please. He needs some milk! So there's no perfect solution here. I've come across one solution that I thought was phenomenal. It was by Josh Schmidt. He said that basically take like a card like Ash Blossom and then get give it like a really nice tournament rarity where like if you top 8 a region or top 32 a YCS, you'd get this super duper tournament secret rare Ash Blossom which means you already have the Ash Blossom. You can get the common or whatever for like two, three bucks. But if you want the max rarity card, it's like a price card from a tournament. It's like two Gs. You know what I mean? That is a phenomenal idea. I think that was one of the best ideas put forth by a Yugi tuber, right? This costs Konami almost nothing additional, but we get great prizing cards that are worth it to keep them, worth it to sell them. They could pay for your trip. They could pay for more than your... It could be your, your tickets, your stay and then some money left over, right? That is ideal. And that's still only for the top, like, you know, couple percent of the tournament. You're not giving out to everybody. Another thing I would propose is to give out a card to everybody. Not that Ash Blossom, but like another card. Um, something from like the current set. So if we're in Phantom Nightmare format, or I guess Legacy of Destruction's coming up, uh, I don't know what card, but maybe like the new Gandora, or I guess that's a secret rare. Maybe the Judgment Dragon Fusion right? He's, I think, a common or super rare in the new set. Make that one in like a nice super secret rare for that uh, particular format. Uh, make it an entry card. It costs you almost nothing, Konami, but you give this, you've given it before in terms of like YCS, like 200, you've given out like uh, uh, field centers, which is essentially the same amount of cardboard. You make this card, you give it out to players with their packs, and the card would probably be worth like 50 to 100 dollars a max rarity for like card for a really popular thing in the new set it would help hype the product up it would help hype that deck up it would help hype the player base up it would at least cover like fuel costs to get to the region or the ycs i would say that the two player structure deck was a great start but it was handled poorly I've heard ideas like add a video link with the deck to show players how to execute moves. I think that's something, you know, like that could be a possibly a really good idea uh, where they could see and kind of follow along a little bit better and not get lost. I think uh, just placing the cards on the field is, is like a hurdle for some players. So uh, a video would definitely go a long way there. I think some refining on this idea, we'd really genuinely have something good. I low-key think that the pure Fire King deck from this year was a good intro for players if they had some guidance with it, because a deck that doesn't rely on retarded extra deck spam has re relatively simple lines to follow and repeat. It's honestly a perfect case in point for structures to follow for in the future. It's a, you know, summon bird, act, get sanctuary, activate sanctuary, get field spell, field spell, pop bird, bird, get other bird, bird effect, 
on summon, destroy another, destroy a uh, gorilla in deck. Boom, you set up your whole combo for next turn and you have like hand traps. So it teaches you how to do turn zero interactions with hand traps, has like a nice boss monster, has recursion, has ability to go into the extra deck, has quick effects, you know, it's literally the perfect deck for a new player. So I think they really did well there. I wish they advertised it more so, but you know how Konami is. They accidentally strike gold and then they don't realize what they, they don't even realize that they did. Another possible thing they could do to alleviate this problem is try to increase support for alternate formats like Edison or Goat, which could be a nice transition format for new players since it's infinitely more easy to pick up and play. You can lo host local tourneys, have regionals, hell, have an alternate format YCS. How cool would that be? I've already come across YouTubers talking about how they quit Yu-Gi-Oh for years, forever ago, and then Edison brought them back once they found out that you can actually play Edison now. This is literally a two birds, one stone situation. Bring back old players, get new ones involved. Now, what are the hardest fixes? The game becomes a race to functional FTKs nowadays, as I've addressed previously in this video. A good idea would be a strong ban list, like I've said, to keep things in check, but that might not be enough. You know, as generic piles have become too powerful now, even when they're hit, they just find new options in their generic type support. We have like Plant Link, we have Dragon Link, we have Fiend Link, we have this Link, we have that Link. If you hit a card in their deck, they just get something new or find something new. There's, it's The entire type supports this deck. So you basically have to almost ban all the generic stuff in the type to stop them from being good. That's why that's where the ban list limitations come in. Uh, come up as a problem but ultimately if you approach it with a murder list intent you could definitely do big things and control this game banning barone and savage is a great start but it's not enough we need more uh interesting idea i saw floated in the comments which i really thought was like really cool you guys are really like clever uh for each player to get one setup turn where neither player can negate each other attack each other whatever you just get to play I'm sure this would introduce like a can of worms into the game, but if executed correctly, could be a solid alternate format. I'm overall not a fan of huge rule changes because the problem is a card design issue, not a game rules issue. If we, uh, plenty of times in the past, people have said like, hey, let's just, you know, five summons per turn, that's it, right? Or three summons. Doesn't matter. Konami will just make an archetype that in four summons is insane or three summons, whatever, right? Like a rice heart existed, guys. You make him in four summons. Nibiru is technically that rule in card form, and it didn't do much. Now it will because Barone's gone. But up until this point, you know, Nibiru had fallen off significantly because ultimately it's card design, not game design. But at the end, what do you guys think? That's the most important thing. This isn't an echo chamber. This isn't uh, a monologue. I want to know what you guys have to say. Did I miss anything? Do you like my solutions? Do you have, you know things you can add to these solutions to make the game even better. I just want the game to be good. That's it. I don't make these videos because I hate this game. I, I, it's quite contrary. I would not make these videos if I didn't like Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't want the game to die. I also didn't want to merely complain and then just bounce and be like, haha, this game's trash. It's like, yeah, that's not helping anyone. Let's try to actually put forth some good ideas that would spread into the community and possibly make their way to Konami. I don't I'm not narcissistic to think that my ideas will make it to Konami. I'm just saying maybe some of my followers pick this idea up, share it to other YouTubers. The other YouTubers kind of roll with it, make a video themselves. Konami definitely checks their stuff. So we eventually could actually make a significant change if we keep talking about the issues, not just sticking our head in the sand like an ostrich. But one more thing before you guys go, if you're interested in an alternate format, a community controlled ban list, go check out the Discord down below join we're going to try to get a tournament set up by the end of april so we can play with an alternate format alternate ban list we have a poll where you can like vote on what cards should be moved to what on the ban list so go check it out go join see you guys there if you like what you see in this video and you like what you see from me check this video here to continue your youtube rabbit hole journey otherwise as always thank you for uh tuning in and i'll see you